Oh, right, this is Return to Two Moon Junction. Let's get this out of the way. This is shit. I accept that when discussing soft porn and stalker films, I'm unlikely to stumble upon a masterpiece, but this is so bad, and I've had to watch it twice, so do me a favour and at least press the like button if you're not going to subscribe. Thanks. We first meet Savannah Delancre, the young sister of April from the first movie. She's writing a letter to April about how this guy Rob is helping with her modelling career, but he's too controlling for her to consider him as a boyfriend. She also mentions how she's been thinking a lot about Two Moon Junction. In these flashbacks, we find out that Savannah's mum has died when she was very young and that the family didn't want her to move to New York so she did so without telling anyone. So after that exposition and attempted first film tie-in we cut to a fashion show. This woman Ronnie seems to be in charge. We see Savannah saying she's going back home for her grandma's birthday and Rob tries the whole there's too much work to do but Savannah is going anyway. Then we see an interview with this weird fashion designer. It is about climbing the step ladder of success and getting a nosebleed. If you recognise that guy, that's Max Headroom. And here's how it works. Savannah comes out of her dressing room and sees Rob trying to get it on with another one of the models and she's pissed off. So during the show, instead of doing a normal model thing, she screams, goes up some stairs and kicks a vase onto the catwalk. Next we see she's on the train home to Alabama, which they've made look as backward as possible. She calls in at the local store where she's ordered something. Special order. That's a secret from the audience, so maybe that's going to be important later. And here we are at Grandma's house. She's excited about being home so she strokes some wood before reuniting with the housekeeper and reverting to a childlike state and because apparently her luggage has been lost she starts going through her old things and picking out some suitable clothes i feel i should point out at this point we're 20 minutes into the film and it feels like nothing has happened this dinner scene has dragged on for far too long so let's recap everything we've learned so far her mum's dead rob's out of the picture and she's lost her luggage that's it oh i see Oh, hang on, something's kicking off. Grandma is planning to sell Two Moon Junction. You're you're selling Two Moon? Which is currently being rented. That place has been nothing but trouble. Ooh, more excitement. Rob has phoned. No, nothing's come of it, but I suppose at least he's naked. Now Savannah is watching old family movies of her and her mum. That's not relevant to anything, but there's nothing else to talk about because nothing has happened. This film is absolute shit. Right, someone's playing tennis now. It's Savannah playing with this pregnant woman's husband. If you're wondering if these people are important, they're not. That night, Savannah goes down to Two Moon Junction on this little boat. And at this point, I was praying for a giant alligator to kill her or something. But no, I'll have to do with this guy who's welding at night. I suppose it must be pretty hot welding at this time, because after 10 seconds of it, he's taken his shirt off and has thrown a bucket of water over himself. Savannah seems to be loving it, though. Next morning, Grandma is trying to convince Savannah to talk to Rob, who she's never met. But she also seems to have arranged a date with her and the guy she met at the shop, who's apparently a realtor. They're playing croquet and talking about the sale of Two Moon Junction. The date ends early and Grandma's annoyed. Savannah drives her mum's old car to the cemetery to visit her mum's tomb, or whatever they call these things. Then she goes to Two Moon Junction. Where she, where she saw the hot welder man last night and starts snooping around. Oh, here he is. This is Jake Gilbert, and he's the tenant. I don't know what the politically correct way of saying this is, but this guy has severe learning difficulties. Uh, there's no point in playing any clips of his voice because it's just he just can't understand the word he's saying. Savannah, who has no knowledge or respect for landlord-tenant law, says he needs to leave now because she's buying Two Moon Junction, and he's like, "No, I've got to leave. So don't piss off." Anyway, that evening. Savannah invites her tennis friend and his pregnant wife over for dinner with Grandma DeLongpre. Their names are Bert and Tracy, by the way, not that it matters. Their visit seems to have been totally pointless, other than as an excuse for Savannah to tell Tracy, oh, I met the most irritating man today. Yeah, all right, I'll give it 15 minutes before he's hanging out the back of you. Later, Savannah decides to touch herself on the balcony, then in bed, and now she's fantasizing about Jake's sexy welding. I suppose this has been the highlight so far, but I can't really show anything good, so you'll just have to imagine it and enjoy these clips of Jake Welding. Next morning, Savannah is at the bank. Oh, look who's come out. It's Jake. It turns out there's some family history and Savannah's great-grandfather took Two Moon Junction from Jake's great-grandfather. I can't make out what he's saying, of course, but it's something like, Oh, I'm not asking Two Moon Junction. Anyway, so Savannah goes to the library to find out what he's talking about before asking her grandma, who's having a productive day, sitting in total silence at home. It turns out that DeLong Priest did fuck the Gilberts over all those years ago, so Savannah rides her boat over to Jake's, who's stroking a wooden swan to apologise. Apparently Jake is some sort of sculptor, and this swan is one of his pieces. Well, it's definitely a piece of something, but Jake is still bitter about what's happened. 
to his great grandfather and starts shouting at her. They're really trying to push this whole rich girl versus poor boy thing and it's just so tired it's irritating. Oh wait a minute, for no reason whatsoever, Jake, who split seconds ago absolutely hated Savannah and her family, has started to kiss her and then they bang. Sorry, but they would have been much better off spending whatever it costs to make this film on actual porn films. There is just no story here at all. It's so bad. Even for an erotic thriller or whatever they call these, this is an absolute joke. Right, when Savannah gets home, Ronnie has arrived from New York, I assume uninvited, and Grandma doesn't look happy, and Savannah starts telling Ronnie about sex with Jake. Next morning, Grandma is crying while looking at old photos, and Savannah is driving Ronnie to Two Moon Junction, as Ronnie has friends who own galleries, and they may well want to display Jake's wooden swans. I don't think so. They seem to have forgotten about last night, because all the hostility is back. As Savannah leaves the house, Ronnie comes out with this gem. He reminds me of this rapper I used to date. MC Ice Pick. Yeah, just fuck off with that. Back at the DeLong Priest house, there's a birthday party for Grandma, and for some reason, Rob has turned up, also uninvited. What is wrong with these people? Who travels over a thousand miles to go to someone's house uninvited? Anyway, Jake has turned up in double denim with flowers for Savannah to apologise for what happened earlier. He sees her out the back with Rob and gets the wrong idea, and this isn't helped by Ronnie. They're cut the same. Then Grandma gets involved. Gilberts have no place in this house. Right, well that would be fine, but he's your tenant, living in your house, and you agreed the deal. Honestly. Anyway, Jake dumps the flowers in a vase and storms out. Cut to Savannah, who's telling Rob it's over. A bit like she did in New York last week. That night, Savannah leaves the gifts she bought at the shop. Remember that? Yeah, whatever. She puts it on her grandma's bed. Housekeeper comes in and tells Savannah that Jake was there earlier, but that he saw her with Rob and fucked off. So she goes over to see Jake. Grandma opens her gift, and I'll be honest, this is the most excited I've been for the past hour. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's a walk. Stick. Savannah has arrived at Jake's and they're arguing like they're in some sort of relationship. Don't do this. Don't shut me out. Don't shut me out? He said fewer than 50 words to you since you've met him and most of them were in anger and you probably can't understand a word he's saying anyway. Then they get into this whole, oh well you obviously don't want me because you're rich and I'm just a poor sculptor, artist or whatever. It's a fucking joke. He says there's going to be no sex tonight so she runs off but there's a storm and she drops her key. That's pushed her over the edge and so instead of picking it up she breaks down and cries. Jake, who's had a sudden change of heart, runs out to help her up, but she pulls him down to the floor. They start resting in the mud. She looks like she's shat herself, so they run into the house, close off and bang. The next morning, they're acting like they're in some sort of relationship, laughing and cooking, riding bikes to the store together, where he buys a kite. Of course he does. He's got severe learning difficulties in the mind of a child. Rob has come to see the realtor who played croquet with Savannah, what feels like hours ago. Clearly he's going to try and buy Two Moon Junction. Now we see Savannah and Jake climbing a waterfall for ages. Now they're kissing, and now they're coming down again. What a waste of time. Now Jake's got his kite out. <laughs> Now he's playing football, which is just an excuse to dry butt hump. Then Jake tells Savannah about how he used to have an agent for his art, but he felt like he'd sold out. He ended up just making all the same pieces over and over again, but Two Moon Junction has saved him. And then they bang. There's some after-sex pillow talk about her dead mum. Again, this goes on for fucking ages, and they've given us no reason to care whatsoever. The next morning, Savannah is heading back to New York, but Jake says, Don't go back. Savannah says she has to go back for work, and plans to continue a long-distance relationship with Jake. But he's like, no, it's either here or there, no in between. So now it's decision time. When Savannah goes back to Grandma's house the next morning, she asks if she liked her gift. I don't need a new cane, Savannah. You ungrateful old bitch. Not sure what the point of that was, but now she's at the realtor's office. She's come in to tell the realtor that she doesn't want to buy Two Moon Junction anymore and she wants Jake to have it. But no, the papers have already been signed. But no, it's not her, it's Rob who's bought it. And Grandma's been in on it. Ronnie then swings by Two Moon Junction and tells Jake that Savannah is getting married to Rob and gives him two weeks to vacate the property. Jake drives off in a mood. Savannah gets there and Ronnie is still there. It turns out Ronnie has helped Rob buy Two Moon Junction. Jake turns up at Grandma's house and sees Rob with Savannah's luggage, who's claiming she's going back to New York with him. Jake grabs Rob by the throat and stares at Grandma, before throwing either the deed or his eviction notice or whatever it is at Rob and storming out. Then Savannah turns up at Grandma's. Right, it's all happening now. It's a real cat and mouse situation. Is he gonna? Is she gonna find him? Is he not? Whatever. How ridiculous that they've left this all to the last few minutes. If anyone had rented this movie back 
back in the 90s, there's next to no chance anyone would have got this far into it without switching it off. Anyway, Savannah confronts Rob, but he's busy on the phone with business. Rob tells Savannah that Two Moon Junction was a wedding present, which is a surprise because she hasn't even agreed to marry him. A taxi takes Savannah to Two Moon Junction, but Jake's not there, and all his stuff has gone, so she goes to her mum's tomb instead. Grandma turns up at the tomb and explains that she used to go out with Jake's granddad, but that was forbidden, so she's made it equally as difficult for Savannah and Jake. That's nice. Then comes some sort of apology, and they have dinner together before Savannah gets in a taxi to the train station. On the platform, she sees Jake... Oh no, that's not him, that's another guy with a blonde ponytail. So she'll have to make do reminiscing about all the time she spent with Jake instead. She gets on the train, but wait, here's the real Jake. He's got a bag, and he's coming with her to New York. And look, it was Grandma who gave him a lift. What a pile of shit. Fuck off. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and check out this other video. Thank you.